types of radioactivity. Um, four basic types, um, alpha particles, I'm sorry, alpha rays, beta rays, gamma rays, and positrons. These are Greek letters. That's a uh, Greek letter for A, alpha, beta, and gamma is the equivalent of C, the letter C. So A, B, C, very creative names there. <coughs> we need to review our nuclear symbols that we learned about earlier. So nuclear symbol for an element, um, here we have the chemical symbol from the periodic table. The mass number is uh, indicated by the capital letter A. The mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of that atom. And the atomic number signified by Z is the number of protons. And so we can figure out how many neutrons are in this um, atom by subtracting. So if you take A minus the Z, you get N, the number of protons. So that should be reviewed. Sorry, the N is the number of neutrons. We talked about how many elements have different isotopes. Um, some have several isotopes, some have two, some only have one. When we're discussing nuclear chemistry, we often refer to a specific isotope as a nuclide. So if you hear that word, nuclide, it just refers to a specific isotope. We can represent them with the nuclear symbols. We can also represent them with the element name or symbol followed by the mass number. Um, we, we've talked about the three main subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. We can also write nuclear symbols for those. The letters here are not capitalized because these are not elements. They're these subatomic particles. So a proton has one proton and no neutrons, so it has a mass number of one. Here we have a neutron. A neutron has no protons, and the mass number is zero plus one for the neutron, so it's one. And then we have the electron, symbol, symbolized by E. Its mass number is zero. Its atomic number is minus one, which may seem impossible, but we'll get to that later. So we're going to look at the four different types of radioactive decay. Alpha decay. <coughs> alpha decay, the nucleus um, spits out, releases an alpha particle. An alpha particle is composed of two protons and two neutrons. Really what an alpha particle is, is it's exactly the same as a helium nucleus. So a helium nucleus without the two electrons. And so we abbreviate or symbolize it with helium, the symbol for helium, and it's got two protons and a mass number of four, two protons and two neutrons. So it's exactly the same as a helium nucleus. So if this is the nucleus of this unstable radioactive nuclide, we have this particle being emitted, and so the alpha particle gets spit out of the nucleus. If you have questions, please interrupt me. In a nuclear equation, we're going we're gonna to keep track of the protons and the neutrons because we can't just balance it with element symbols because we have elements changing their identity. So we use nuclear equations to represent radioactive processes. And an important idea here is the sum of the atomic numbers on both sides of the nuclear equation must be equal. So we could have... Um, uranium turning into thorium or something. But we're not going to be losing protons and neutrons. They're just going to be moving around a little bit. So here is an example. Uh, the atomic numbers have to be equal on both sides, and the mass numbers have to be equal on both sides. So here we have a parent nuclide. This is uranium-238. All uranium atoms have 92 protons, but some have more or less neutrons. This one has a total of 238 neutrons plus protons. This one is radioactive. It will release a helium nucle nucleus, which we call an alpha particle. And so what we do to figure out what's left is we do math, very simple adding and subtracting math on the mass numbers and the, the atomic numbers. 
So if this is 92 and it lost two protons, then the atomic number for this new thing must be 90. And then we see on the periodic table, we find element number 90 and the symbol is TH, so that's thorium. The mass number, we started with 238 and we lost four. We lost two neutrons and two protons, so a total of four. The mass number here, four plus this, has to add up to 238. Does that make sense? So that's how we get the mass number. This is the parent and this is the daughter. So it's the offspring of the parent. And in these nuclear reactions, we often have elements changing their identities. We haven't seen this before because this only happens in nuclear chemistry. Any questions? Yes? We will talk about half-lives later. Yeah. <coughs> Doesn't that look fun? Um, it's really not that bad. So we figure out um, if, if we have this thorium-232 undergoing alpha decay, spitting out an alpha particle, we can figure out what the daughter nuclide is by comparing the numbers. And when you write it all out like this, it looks worse than when you just think about it, unless you're a math person. So here I have 90, and here I have something I don't know, plus 2, and they have to equal 90. So this must be 88 then, because 88 plus 2 will equal 90. Everybody in this room can do this math, okay? This is not hard stuff. 232. So our total of the, high, the top numbers here, these have to add up. 4 plus x has to add up to 232. So x must be 228, because 228 plus 4 will give us 232. So then how would we identify what's in there? Well, okay, I thought it was on the next slide, but it's not. So what, what is this symbol then? What goes in there? Well, we've got... 228 as the mass number, and we've got 88 as the atomic number. We find element 88 on the periodic table. It's, it's Ra, radium. Many of these elements are not ones that I asked you to memorize the symbols for, and you don't need to know their names. You just find the symbol on the periodic table and write it down. This just happens to be radium. So we should be able to do a problem like this. Write the nuclear equation for the alpha decay of PO216. So I think the trickiest thing to remember is what is alpha decay? Alpha decay is the emission of a helium nucleus. So you kind of just have to memorize that. So we've got an alpha particle. If you have alpha decay, it's losing a helium particle, a, I'm sorry, a helium nucleus. So that's what the alpha particle is. And then PO216, we need to write the nuclear symbol for this. Well, we have the element symbol PO. The 216 is the mass number. Because we have no way of knowing which one it is unless it's given to us. And then we need the at atomic number, so we find PO on the periodic table and its atomic number is 84. So we look it up on the periodic table, we write 84 here. That's the parent nuclide. It's going to spit out an alpha particle. So it's going to release an alpha particle. And, you know, it doesn't matter what order. If you want to put the alpha particle first, that's fine. So there's the alpha particle, and then I've got this something else. So 216... If I subtract 4, I'm going to get 212. 212 plus 4 equals 216. You okay with that? If I take 84 and subtract 2, I'm going to get 82. 82 plus 2 equals 84. It's this balancing thing. We have to have the same stuff on each side. But here we're looking at neutrons and protons instead of atoms. Well, which element has the number 82? PB. And there you go. 
That's the nuclear equation for the alpha decay of polonium-216. Any questions? Um, these different types of radi radiation um, have different qualities to them. And this is something that I do want you to know. So we have sort of um, a transportation analogy here. Alpha radiation, um, alpha particles are like the semi-trucks. So if we think about traffic, right, a semi-truck is very big, right? It's massive. It's very large. Um, alpha particles are the largest particles that are emitted by radioactive nuclei. It has very high ionizing power. Ionizing power is the amount of damage that it can inflict. Um, when you ionize the molecules, the atoms in a living organism, that changes their chemical properties and messes up all the biochemical reactions that are occurring, it's bad news for your health. That's why radiation isn't good. It ionizes your particles. So just like if you get hit by a semi-truck, you're going to be in a world of hurt. If you get um, bombarded with alpha radiation, this is going to be bad. So the ionizing power, big, massive. But it has the lowest penetrating power. And the way I think of it, remember this, the low penetrating power is like, okay, let's imagine this 18-wheeler in a traffic jam in downtown New York. Is this going to be able to penetrate through the traffic jam very easily? No. Now, if you were on a motorbike, you'd be able to, to squeeze through, right? But not in an 18-wheeler. This massive particle, compared to the other radioactive particles, <coughs> um, does not penetrate well. So it can be stopped even by a piece of paper. A piece of notebook paper will stop alpha radiation. But once it gets to your tissue, it causes a lot of damage. So this is not a big hazard just in the environment, but if you eat something, if you ingest or inhale or inject something that is giving off uh, alpha radiation, then it can cause a lot of damage. So the next one is beta decay. Um, beta decay is the emission of an electron. So a beta particle is an electron, and this is the symbol for the electron. So what's really happening here is that a neutron is coming apart and forming a proton and an electron, and the electron is spit out. So that's why we have this negative one here, which seems impossible. But if you take a proton and an electron and you add their mass numbers and their atomic numbers together, you get the, the formula for the, night, the neutron. So if we have radium-228 and it undergoes beta decay, it's going to really, um, the daughter nuclide will be actinium-228. Zero plus 228 equals 228. Negative one plus 89 equals 88. Let's write a nuclear equation for the beta decay of AC228. Okay. I was like, that. we just did that one. No, we didn't. <coughs> so beta decay. What you have to know is this is an electron, 0 minus 1. So we have AC228 is the mass number that goes on top. We find the atomic number by looking at the periodic table. It's 89. That is going to undergo beta decay. So minus 1, and the that's the electron. That's the beta particle. And then we have to figure out what the mass number and atomic number are for this daughter nuclide, this new atom that's formed. Well, 228, uh, here we've got a 0, so this is going to be 228 still. The mass number doesn't change when it undergoes beta decay. 89, uh, here we have negative 1, so this must be what? 90. Because if we put 90 and negative 1 together, 
we get 89. I know negatives can really mess with you. And then we look on the periodic table, we find number 90, STH. There's the nuclear equation for the beta decay of AC228. Any questions? So beta radiation is like the four-door sedan of radiation. Um, they're less massive than the alpha particles, the semi-trucks. So they have lower ionizing power. <coughs> they, are, they are more penetrating, though. So if we think about the traffic jam, a four-door car is easier to get through a traffic jam than an 18-wheeler. It can penetrate the traffic jam. But when it runs into something, it doesn't do as much damage. Okay? So beta particles are more dangerous in the atmosphere because they can get through your skin. They can go through your skin. They can go through your clothing. But when they do get inside, they're not as dangerous as the alpha particles were because they don't ionize as much. But they're easier to stop. So they can be stopped by a sheet of metal or even a thick piece of wood. The third one, gamma radiation, is really not a particle at all. It is electromagnetic radiation, and maybe you remember from our discussion of light that gamma radiation was on the high energy end of the electromagnetic spectrum. So gamma rays are high energy photons. They have no charge, no mass. Um, when, a, when an isotope undergoes gamma emission, it does not change its mass number or its atomic number. So the symbol for it is the gamma, the Greek letter gamma, and um, zero, zero. Gamma rays are usually emitted with other types of radiation, not usually just by themselves. So we could see something like this where we've got um, uranium-238, what type of decay is it undergoing? What's, what kind of particle is that? Alpha. That's an alpha particle. So it's undergoing alpha decay. It's also releasing gamma radiation. There is no way that you would know that this reaction also releases gamma radiation unless I told you, okay? Gamma rays are the motorbikes. So they penetrate through things very easily. They can get through that traffic jam. Even if no cars are moving, the motorbike can go between the cars. It can go up on the sidewalk. It can get through lots of stuff. It takes several inches of lead shielding or thick slabs of concrete to stop gamma rays. This, this wall here, the gamma rays could go through it. It's not thick enough. But it has the lowest ionizing power. Ionizing power is the damage when it crashes into you, right? Motorbike crashing into something doesn't do nearly as much damage as a car and certainly far less than a semi-truck. Does that make sense? It gets through better, but it doesn't do as much damage. So we don't ask you to write equations for those because you really can't. It doesn't change anything. And then there's positron emission. <coughs> So positron is like an anti-electron. Electron, positron. It's positive, but it basically has no mass. It has the same mass as an electron, which we said is just pretty much negligible. So it's the opposite of an electron, the antiparticle. So if you, took, if you collide a particle and an antiparticle, just calling on your knowledge of like science fiction movies and books, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to annihilate each other, right? So what happens here is when we have, when we have a positron that collides with an, electrons, with an electron, the two particles essentially wipe each other out, no. and no. what they were gets converted into energy, and that energy takes the form of gamma rays. So it's not really that anything's disappearing, but we have matter being, a very small quantity of matter, being changed into energy. That's what happens. So when we have positron emission, what happens is the positron, I'm sorry, the proton, a proton, is converted into a neutron and a positron. 
that is then emitted. So this is similar to another equation we had. Let's go back to this one, right? A neutron can decompose into a proton and an electron. Or a proton can come apart into a neutron and a positron. So the positron has um, a similar symbol as the electron, but it's a plus one charge instead of a negative one charge. Uh, positrons are similar to beta particles in terms of their ionizing power and their penetrating power, which makes sense because they're like very, very similar. Really the only difference is the charge, positive instead of negative. So here's a table from your textbook just uh, summarizing these things. <coughs> um, ionizing power, penetrating power, um, they kind of go, they're inversely correlated. If you have high penetrating power, then you have low ionizing power and vice versa. With positron emission, what happens is that the, the daughter nuclide is, um, is less massive than the, um, the parent. In the beta emission, the atom actually um, gains an electron, is, um, gains a proton. Are you guys done with the semester yet? I'm so over this semester. We have to, we have to finish strong. This is the last lecture. We're going to get through it. Okay, so let's write a nuclear equation. This, I think, should have been before that last slide. Nuclear equation for the positron emission of sodium-22. So the key here is remembering the symbol for positron. Positron is the anti-electron. So that would be an electron. This is the opposite, so it has a positive one. So... Sodium-22, positron emission. So we write the symbol for sodium-22. And we look in the periodic table to find the atomic number, 11. And we draw an arrow. Then we write the symbol for the type of radiation. And then we use those numbers to figure out what the numbers are for this new daughter nuclide. So 22, here we have a 0. The mass number stays the same. Here we have 11, and over here we have 1 plus something needs to equal 11. 10. Okay? Because we need, we need the superscripts to add up to equal the same as the superscripts over here, and the subscripts to add up and equal the same as the subscript over there. So what's element number 10? Neon. Neon. So sodium can actually change into neon by emitting a positron. Now, does it do this a lot? No. You can force things to, to de yeah. You can bombard them with particles and break them up. You can turn lead into gold. It's just not economically feasible. You're better off just going and digging some up somewhere or buying it, you know, online even. <laughs>